Hey boys and girls, it's me, Miss Booksy. Summer is finally here, and that means playing outside and camp YouTube. Let's read all our favorite outdoor adventures right now. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey guys, it's me, Nikki. Are you ready for s'more great science experiments? That's right, we're making s'mores. Yes, I love s'mores. I am so in. Thought that might get your attention. For those of you who don't know what s'mores are, it's the most delicious dessert that's so good you can't have just one, so you always have s'mores. I didn't know that's where the name comes from. Me neither, I just made that up, but sounds good. Comment and like below if you love s'mores like we do. Works for me, bring them on. Now you're probably all wondering how the delightful s'more came to be. Shouldn't we try one first? So I'm gonna break it down for you. Uh, okay, fine. First things first, the crispity, crunchy graham cracker. Created in 1829 by none other than Reverend Sylvester Graham. He wanted to create a healthy but delicious cookie. Enter the graham cracker. You go, Reverend Graham. Next on deck, a sweet melt in your mouth treat we all know as chocolate. You got it. Conrad Van Houten was the genius behind this one. He had a Dutch processed chocolate making technique, which Sir Joseph Fry used to create the very first hard chocolate bar. Joseph, my man. Last but not least, the one and only ooey gooey marshmallow, whose famous shape was invented by Alex Dumas. Hey Alex, do you mock any other delicious sweets? <laughs> Get it? Do mock? It's his last name. But these yummy ingredients weren't finding each other on their own. No, sir. It was a Girl Scout troop leader named Loretta Scott Crew who put them all together into the s'more we all know and love. So what are we waiting for? Let's make some s'mores. Here's what you'll need. One plate or napkin, two graham cracker halves, one large marshmallow, four chocolate cubes attached, a roasting skewer, heat, and adult supervision. First, Place the gram flat on your plate or napkin and lay the chocolate directly on top. Set the plate aside for now and pop the marshmallow onto your roasting skewer. This is where you'll need some adult supervision. Hey kids, need some help? This is where science comes in. You see, inside marshmallows is something called gelatin. Gelatin is made of molecules that are wrapped around each other super tight. That's what makes marshmallows tough and jiggly. But when you put them near heat, the gelatin molecules loosen up. And become soft and gooey and extra yummy? You got it! Just pull the marshmallow away from the fire before it gets too melted and pop it right onto your chocolate graham cracker sandwich. But be careful, it's... Ooh, ooh, ha, ha. Guys, don't try that at home. Anyway, you'll see that the heat from the marshmallow will melt your chocolate right away. That's because chocolate is made mostly of cocoa butter, which melts at about room temperature. Once the melting starts, just drop the other half of the graham cracker on top and voila! S'mores! Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Warp show? Bon appetit! Thanks to science, there's plenty more where that came from. I love science. Once upon a time, there was a king and queen. There they are right now. Hello! Hello. They were really good at their job. They took care of their people. They listened to the people of their kingdom. Sure, I agree that every Friday shall be Pizza Friday. Yay! Pizza! Pizza! They made the tough decisions. Hmm, should everyone in the kingdom have off from work for trampoline day? Well, it does sound like fun for everyone. Okay, I declare tomorrow everyone has the day off. Jump away! Yay! And most importantly, they were kind. No, no, I insist. After you. Oh my, thank you, your majesty. So it's no surprise that they were also really great parents. And their daughters, AKA princesses, were also pretty awesome. The youngest daughter named Tanya was really special. Some might even say enchanting. In fact, the sun even marveled when it shone on her face. Oh my, you're marvelous. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> But Princess Tanya was not just into jewels, fancy dresses, and tea parties, <laughs> although those things were all pretty cool, too. Yeah, I have lots of hopes and dreams, and I really love, love, love soccer. Or some might say, football. Who am I kidding? I don't play soccer in this dress. That's better. Princess Tanya was really good at soccer. 
She played on her kingdom's team. They were the Golden Warriors and they won a lot of games and sometimes lost, but always had fun. One day at her game. Okay guys, this is for the championship. You can do it. Work together. Go, Go Golden Warriors. Warriors. Come on princess, this is your chance. For the winning goal, you can do it. No! I really need to work on my skills. So that's what she did. I practiced day in and day out. Of course, as long as I finish my chores. Yeah, princesses do chores too. <laughs> I practiced my kicking. I practiced my blocking. I practice my dramatic falling on the ground pretending I'm injured. Oh, oh, owie, owie. <laughs> Rip. I practice my victory dancing. I practice until I was so tired. Make sure you rest and then keep practicing. You know what they say, practice makes. Perfect, I know, practice makes perfect. No, I was going to say practice makes you a hard worker. It's not about being perfect. It's important to work hard when you're going for your dreams. Thanks, Mom. You're so wise. <laughs> well, I mean, I used to be quite the athlete in my day. Four? Yeah, Mom. You've told us just a few times how good you were. <laughs> well, I'm going to go play some more. See ya. Princess Tanya went for a walk through the forest near the castle. She had her special golden ball with her. Mom said I should rest, and my most favorite place to chill out is by the linden tree. There's this relaxing well. Sometimes I even make wishes on the well. Hey, Princess Tanya, what's up? Seen any rainbows recently? No, actually, I haven't. I've been kind of busy. <laughs> Here, catch. Oops, sorry. The whole no legs thingy makes playing soccer tricky. That's okay. You're good at a lot of other things. Aw, oh, shucks. And you are really good at lots of stuff too, princess. Like, obviously, you're a soccer star. I'm doing my best. Watch this. Uh-oh, it's about to fall in. No, no! Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. My golden ball! Princess Tanya lost her golden ball in the well! <laughs> the son tried his best to help. Hey, princess, here you go! Have some me shine? Get it? Me shine instead of sunshine? It's no use, Mr. Sun! My ball is gone forever! Well, maybe not forever. Cheer up! How can I cheer up when my most favorite thing in all the land is gone, lost, vanished? <laughs> this is very sad. Maybe a little dramatic, but... <laughs> Who? Me? Dramatic? <gasps> what? Sorry. Forget I said anything. I'm just gonna go home. Princess Tanya had gone back to the castle <laughs> with no ball in hand. That afternoon, when it was tea time, Princess Tanya was sitting with her sisters and her mom. She was not her usual happy self. They could see something was wrong. Princess Tanya, why the long face? Yeah, you're eating your favorite chocolate biscuits. You should be so happy. But I'm not happy. I'm way upset, you guys. Uh, yeah, we can tell. What gives? I lost my most favorite golden ball. It fell in the well when I was practicing. And now what will I do? And how will I get serious skills if I don't have it? And it was my good luck charm. And I feel like I've lost a part of my soul. And I can't stop crying in the middle of everything. Even when I do my chores, it's like, here I am sweeping, but I'm so sad. Sweep, sweep, wah. And, and, sweet daughter. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Sorry. Now, why don't you go back to the well and see if you can get it back? Okay, I'll try. So the princess went back to the well by the linden tree. And of course, when she got there, no ball was in sight. She started crying again. Why? Why? Uh-oh, here we go again. I'm sorry, Mr. Sun, and I'm sorry I was so rude to you yesterday. I just feel so sad. I get it. 
Why are you crying? Mr. Sun, I just told you. That wasn't me. Huh? Then whose voice was that? Hello? It's me. Ah! You're, you're, you're talking and you're a frog. You're a talking frog. Uh, I mean, you were just talking to the sun, so... Right. True. <clears throat> Anyways. So why are you so sad? I could hear your cries from miles away. Well, yesterday, my most favorite golden soccer ball fell into the well when I was trying to show the sun some really cool tricks. Hmm. That does sound like a problem. It is. And now I don't know what to do. <laughs> hmm. I bet I could help. That's sweet, but I don't really know how a tiny talking frog is going to be able to get me a new golden ball. Oh, I mean, I could go fetch your ball for you. Really? Yeah, I'm a really good swimmer. And you look like you're a good person. Who needs a helping hand? Poor flipper. What, what would you call this? Um, I'm not sure. So, are you going to get my ball or not? Absolutely. Great, thanks. Okay, but what do I get in return? There's always a catch. So? Well, that is like my most favorite thing of all the things I have. So you could have my clothes, my pearls, my precious stones, even my golden crown. Thanks, but I don't need all that fancy stuff. Well, then what can I offer you? Friendship. I don't have any friends. Huh? You know, this royal forest, this wishing well, these woods, they all get pretty lonely. I'd love to have a new friend. We could do lots of cool stuff together. Um... If you say yes, I'll jump in and get your ball right now. Well... I'm not quite sure what kind of companionship a frog can offer. They're kind of slimy. And don't they usually live in water? But I'm really desperate here. So... Okay, you got yourself a deal. Deal. Ew. I mean, thanks. Princess Tanya watched as the frog took a running start and leapt into the well. And she waited and waited and waited. Then suddenly, the frog emerged to the surface of the water with a loud gasp of air. Got it. Whoa, I'm your hero. Um, that is not my ball. My ball is golden colored and beautiful and so special to me. Are you sure? You don't want to take a closer look? Maybe it's yours, but just got dirty. Ah! Ew! OMG, what was that? Sorry. Oh, just a fish. Well, thank you so much for trying, Mr. Frog. Guess it's no use. My ball's gone forever. I guess I'll just move out of the castle and change my name and go start a little surf shop on the beach. Um, that sounds like a slight overreaction. Oh, maybe I am overreacting, but what am I gonna do? Princess Tanya was sure she would never see her ball ever again. Wow, it's gone forever. I'll never get it back. Hey, don't cry. If you start crying, then I'm gonna start crying, and then... Let me try one more time, beautiful princess. If I can find it, you'll be my friend, right? Yeah, sure, whatever, thank you. The frog dove down to the bottom of the well again to find the ball. <laughs> Aha! You said golden soccer ball, yeah? I also see a golden football, a golden baseball, a golden hockey puck. Do you want those too? Oh, just the soccer ball is fine, thanks! You sure? So many cool things down here. Just the ball, thank you! Suddenly, there it was. Oh, thank you, thank you! I'm so happy I can kiss... Um, give you a nice nod of thanks. <laughs> See ya, frog dude. Where are you going? You promised we'd be friends. You gave me a high five. But Princess Tanya was so excited, she forgot about her deal with the frog. She dribbled it all the way home. Wait for me. You're running too fast. I can't keep up. Oh, man. I should start working out. Yay, my ball. Princess. The frog chased after Princess Tanya, but soon she was out of sight. Still, the frog wasn't going to give up. All he wanted was to be her friend. Seriously, that's the thanks I get. Better start heading towards the castle. This might take a while. Meanwhile, Princess Tanya had already made it back to the castle. And she shoots! She scores! Tanya, dear, please don't kick your soccer ball at the house. Oh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> I'll just practice my footwork. 
that night, Princess Tanya peacefully went to sleep and she dreamt of the most magical things. And there she goes, ladies and gentlemen. She's off. She's faster than a rocket ship. I'm going to make the winning goal. She's doing it, folks. She's really doing it. Watch out. Here I... Huh? Hi. Wait a minute. Princess Tanya woke up from her dream a little confused, but in a split second, she was fine again. She had her ball, and it was all good. She was so glad she could sing. Tra la 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 I don't know the words to this song. It's a good day to be alive <laughs> and maybe do some art projects and of course, play soccer. Oops, I don't want to be late for breakfast. The king, queen, and princess were all eating a big wonderful breakfast. Fruit salad, sparkling cider, French toast with strawberries, sprinkles, and whipped cream. Princess Tanya's favorite. Mmm. This is so yummy. I agree. La 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 la. I love sprinkles and whipped cream and all these yummy things. Tra la 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 la. <laughs> you seem happy today. I got my golden soccer ball back. Now I can practice forever and ever. Congratulations. How'd you get it back? Um, well, you see, I am, um, I don't remember, I think. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I'll get it! Princess Tanya excitedly ran to the door as fast as she could. As she opened the door, she looked around but couldn't see anybody. When she looked down... Hi, best friend! Ah! It was the frog! Princess Tanya screamed and slammed the door shut. What is it, dear? Nothing. Let me see! She's right! There's nothing there! Ew! Gross! What's all the commotion? What's out there? Is it a giant? Our version of the three little pigs! Yay! Here we go, chapter one. Hi guys, it's me, Little Red, and I'm here to... I thought you said we're reading the three little pigs. Yes, I know, but we have our special friend, Little Red, helping us tell the story. Okay, let's get back to it. So as I was saying, I'm Little Red, and I have such an epic story to tell you guys. There once was a family of pigs. Family meeting! Coming, Coming Mom. Mom! But first, mud milkshakes? Yeah. Yes! And I want chocolate! Please, can I have the mint chip? And I'll have a worm and crickets milkshake. Gross! Gross! What? I'm unique, okay? Okay, Piggies, we wanted to talk to you guys today because we are so happy that you are growing into big, strong pigs and we have loved the past 32 years of raising you and having you live in our house and doing your laundry and you not paying rent. But we feel the time. You gotta move out. <gasps> Okay, we knew you wouldn't like this, but I didn't think you would take it this hard. Sorry, you're all grown up now. Bye. Harsh! You'll need to get jobs so you can pay for supplies to build your own houses. When I was your age, I had to walk 52 miles in the snow to my first job. Dad, we already heard this story a million times. Well, it's gonna be hard work for you guys, but we believe in you. My little piggies are all grown up. Don't worry, Mom. We got this. Secret sibling cheer? One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family. Stand up and holler. And just when the three little pigs were amping themselves up to go out and look for jobs, there was a knock on the door. Who are you? Hey, don't be rude. Hello, who might you be, girl covered in red? I'm Little Red. Mm, makes sense. I was wandering through these woods to get to my grandma's house. See, she's sick with a cold and I wanted to go cheer her up. This story sounds so familiar, like a fairy tale my grandma read me when I was a little piglet. Anyways, I'm super exhausted and kind of just bored from walking around so long, so do you think I could chill with you guys for a bit? Well, we were just gonna go to downtown. We're getting jobs and moving on up. You could come with us. That sounds like an adventure. I'm sure Grandma will be fine for a little while longer. <laughs> Yay! Yay! But before you go, would you like a slug shake? Um, I'm afraid to ask what that is, so no thank you. So Little Red and the three pigs went off to the town. They had fun and got to know each other. They played guessing games. Can you guess my favorite color? Hmm, that's easy. Red? Yellow, actually. <laughs> Can you guess my favorite snack? Bacon. <gasps> 
Just kidding, sorry. <laughs> they smelled the flowers. They made new friends. They stopped for a bite to eat. They ran around in circles. They basically did everything except find new jobs. This has been fun and all, guys, but we should really find somewhere that's hiring. But finding a job is so hard. <laughs> oh. If only there was a place that we could go that helped pigs get jobs. If only it was that easy. Um, guys, kind of like the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs? Yeah, let's go. So what brings you to us, the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get the jobs? Well, isn't it kind of obvious? What kind of jobs do you have available? Oh, many things. Cupcake makers, we need builders, painters, molecular biologists. Huh? We need the gingerbread decorators, truck drivers, teachers, professional nappers. Ooh, I want that one. Oh, I am so sorry, but none of these jobs are available right now. Oh. oh. Well, we need something. Our mom and dad are going to be super mad at us. Well, why don't you tell us what the pigs can do immediately? Yes, I have just the thing. Hey, you look familiar. Who, me? So you were saying that you had just the right jobs for these pigs? Yes, I have just the thing that will bring home the bacon. What? <gasps> oh, <clears throat> no offense, just a figure of a speech. I have the perfect job for you three. There's an opening at the candy factory. Ooh. Oh. You can start the day. Here, sign these papers. What do they say? Don't worry about it. The pigs will have the best jobs in town. Hmm. I hope I can taste test candy. I hope I can swim in a candy pool. I just hope we can make some money soon so we can buy building supplies. You guys are going to do great. So the three pigs went to the first day of their job. Little Red followed along for support. They were nervous and excited. It took the pigs a little getting used to. I mean, they never worked a day in their life. They made mistakes. They were sometimes late. They sometimes said the wrong thing. Yeah, boss, I literally didn't work today. All I did was eat candy. Uh, oops. Sometimes they ate way too many pieces of candy and got belly aches. But after a while, they saved up enough money to build their own houses. So Little Red went with the first pig to the store. So what do you think you need to build a strong house? Hmm. I want something quick, because I'd rather be doing anything else besides building. How about this? No way! One drop of rain and the paper will disintegrate! Marshmallows? No. Slime? No! Okay, fine. Straw it is. Oh, I don't think straw is gonna be super strong. Too bad, I'm bored. Let's go. Ugh, Hamon! I don't know about this. Oh, did I tell you his name is Hamon? So Little Red helped Hamon build his house of straw. It looked okay, but Little Red knew it probably wasn't a very strong house. Wow! You did it! It looks... nice. Well, let's see how this goes. I am so tired. I need a nap. While Hamon napped, Little Red called her grandma to check on how she was feeling. Hey, Grandma. Sup, girl. How you feeling? Oh, Red! I am so happy to hear your voice. I hope you don't mind, but I might be a little late because I'm helping some friends. Of course. You are such a good friend. You rest and drink some tea, Grandma, and I'll be there soon. Love you. Bye. Suddenly, there was a loud noise coming from outside. It sounded like an engine of some sort. Little Red ran to the window to see what was happening. Oh, little pig! Little pig! It's that interviewer guy. He really looks familiar. The sound of the leaf blower woke Hamon up from his slumber. What? What's happening? Where am I? Is this my house? Yeah, dude. This is your house that you built. Remember? But that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs is outside. He looks a little mad. We're a little excited. I'm not really sure. Little pig, let me in, let me in. I don't want to let him in. I have morning breath and this place is a mess. Sorry, you can't come in. Yeah, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Like seriously, this thing is hairy. I need to shave before I see anyone. It's like one little hair. Whatever. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. That escalated quickly. Why would he do that? My house! 
I worked so moderately hard on that. What are we gonna do? And where did that guy go? But the wolf was nowhere to be found. Come on, let's go to my brother's house. We can crash with him. Oh man, I really hope he chose something stronger to build his house with. I just knew straw was not a good plan. So Little Rat and Hamon were running to their brother's house when suddenly they got a call from Mom Pig. Oh, hello, my sweet darling. I miss you so much. How is it going over there? Is everything okay? Eh, what do I say? I don't want her to know about the whole house getting destroyed, thingy. Just be honest. I'm going to tell her that I'm just going to visit my brother, Hamilton. It's always better to tell the truth. Um, hi, Mom. Doing great. Out for a jog with Little Red. We're going to see Hamilton now. Oh, how nice. <laughs> I only miss you a tiny bit. Gotta go, Ma. We're, uh, doing some stretches. We're almost there. I can see him right over there. Hamilton was just getting home from work. Hey, dude, we have a big problem. Yeah, the creepy guy from that place blew my entire house down. How could he do that? It seems like he'd need a lot of air. Like, like... <coughs> he had a leaf blower. I don't know what his deal is, but can we crash with you? Well, I haven't actually finished building my house. Yeah, it looks like it needs a bit of work. What did you use to make it? Uh, I just found a bunch of sticks lying around in the forest. Why? What did you do with all your money? I I'm not going to tell you I spent it all on gummy bears and comic books, but... You spent all your money on gummy bears and comic books? Let's just fix this thing, okay? We'll help, I guess, if it means we can stay. Fine. So the three of them tried to finish the house of sticks. Just like straw, the sticks were not very strong, so they kept having to fix little parts of the broken house. They tried tape. They used glue. They even tried using chewing gum as adhesive. When they were done, the house looked a little crazy. I guess you could call it rustic. Now that we have so much extra time, since we're not doing annoying things like building a house, let's have some fun! Party, party, party! Yeah, let's play games! Let's eat! And my favorite, let's dance! The two pigs and Little Red played and danced and enjoyed themselves until they realized they were almost going to be late for work. Again. <laughs> uh, that was a good joke, Hamilton. Whoa, guys, we gotta go. Hopefully your sister Porchetta gets there in time too. But what they didn't realize was that Porchetta was already at work. She had been working overtime so that she could save up lots of extra money to build a strong house. So when the others got to the candy factory, they were surprised to see her. Why are you working so hard? There's so many better things to do besides work. Ugh. Yeah, Porchetta, you're being so weird. All you're doing is working and not even having fun. Lame. Well, guys, it's important to do your job well. And it's good to take your time. I don't want to rush my house building. Otherwise, something bad could happen to it. Bad? Like, I don't know, maybe the house being blown down or something? What? Nothing. Nothing. All right, all right. Let's just do our job so we can go home. So all the pigs and Little Red worked all day. They taste tested candy. They fixed broken machines. They separated sprinkles by color. They took a lunch break. They helped lift heavy chocolate bars. They took a nap break. At the end of the day, everyone was super tired and super ready to go home. Hamon and Hamilton said their goodbyes to poor Cheddar. I'm going to stay and work a little bit more. Whatever. Bye. But while they were at work, the big bad wolf paid a visit to Hamilton's stick house and blew the thing down with a huge fan. And remember, the pigs in Little Red didn't realize it was the big bad wolf yet. What the? What was this dude's deal? Well, the pigs were in for quite a surprise. No! My beautiful, rustic, fragile house! I'll bet it was that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs. I'm telling you, that guy looked so familiar. I just get a bad feeling around him. Us, Us too. too! What are you going to do now? It's getting dark. I'm totally starving and we have nowhere to sleep. I think you know what you guys have to do. 
Go find a hot air balloon and fly to Antarctica and change your names forever? No, I think you should apologize for being mean to poor Chetta and see if she'll let you stay at her house. Uh, I don't like apologizing. Me neither. Well, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to just because it's the right thing. Uh, you're probably right. Plus, we really need help. This should be interesting. So Little Red, Hamon, and Hamilton, with their piggy tails between their legs, went to talk to their sister. When they arrived, they were in for quite a surprise. Oh, guys, it looks like her house isn't even done yet. Uh, hello, Porchetta. We started building like weeks ago. Uh huh, what's taking so long? Hi, guys. Well, it takes time if you want to do a good job. Blech! Who would want to do a good job? I just want it to be fast. I mean, maybe we could have tried a little harder on our houses? Hamon, why don't you tell her what happened? Well, basically, our houses are gone, kaput, zilch, dunzo. What? How? What happened? I don't know. I mean, you'd think straw and sticks would be... You built your houses with straw and sticks? No wonder they fell down. Well, they didn't exactly fall down. The pigs explained to Porchetta the whole story. She was shocked, but also not 100% surprised, because her brothers were known for always taking the easy route. So if you guys learned your lesson... That we should have stayed with mom and dad? No, that it's important to work hard and take your time doing things the right way. Even if it's really, really annoying? Yes, even if it's really annoying. So what are we going to do to make things right? Well, I guess we should say we're sorry, Porchetta, for being rude to you. That's okay, we're family. Let's build this house together and keep that crazy guy out. He kind of looks like a wolf. OMG, that's it. He's the big bad wolf. I've dealt with that guy before. Ah, uh, we pigs definitely don't like wolves. Well, we just need to make this house super strong. I've been using bricks, one by one. Oh man, no wonder you have such strong muscles. Yep. And we should set traps, just in case. So they all worked together and really hard to make a house out of bricks. It was difficult and they had to take little breaks. You guys, I'm sweating over here. Let's have some lemonade. Oh, I forgot I had a bunch of treats in my basket. Let's have a little picnic. Ooh, cranberry scones, my favorite. <sighs> it's so good, but <sighs> I'm sleepy. And so they all took a well-deserved little rest. While they were sleeping, the big bad wolf showed up. He tiptoed past them so they wouldn't wake up. But when he tried to open Porchetta's front door... Ooh, what is that? Yes, my first trap worked. I'll be back. Good thinking, Hamon. You saved us. Saved by the slime, yeah. What do you think the wolf wanted? Yeah, are we in trouble? There is something fishy going on here. I guess we do need to set some traps, just in case he comes back. So they set up all different kinds of traps to protect them from the wolf. They set up invisible wire. They filled buckets with glue and feathers. They spread out syrup all over the floor to make them stick and not be able to run away. They made that thingy. Well, the whole house is basically ready. Yay, secret sibling cheer. Let's do it. One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family, stand, stand up, up and holler. holler. Yeah! While the pigs in Little Red were feeling really proud of themselves, Mom and Dad Pig were at home, feeling, well... Oh, 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 I miss my little piglets so much! Darling, they are 32 years old. It was time for them to move out. But there's so much more I wanted to teach them. They don't even know how to make beef bourguignon yet. That doesn't sound too necessary. But that is your favorite dish. What are we supposed to do now? I guess we could sit on these chairs and stare out the window for the rest of our lives. So yeah, you could say they weren't dealing with the separation too well. But back at the brick house, things were getting interesting. So you just take these two corners and put them together like this. Wow, that was easy. Yeah, we really could have been doing this ourselves for the past... Oh, 20 years. Mom and Dad really did a lot for us. It feels good to be on our own. I love learning new things. 
And next, I'm going to teach you to balance a checkbook. Whoa, now you guys really are grown-up pigs. The pigs in Little Red were so excited about being grown-ups now that they did so many grown-up things. They went food shopping, they paid bills, they even babysat their neighbor's baby piglets. They did a great job. My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Kluster Stadenstank. Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White, and pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny, and then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> she was smart, A-N-I-S-M, and that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on Earth. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Dottenstonk. But you can call her the Evil Queen for sure. As you might guess, the Evil Queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The Queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches live, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha. I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who I'm trying to sleep. So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land! Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure, of all. Say it then, say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all? Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. Yep, she looks pretty mad. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. 
Oh, she tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on King Business at the semi-annual Royal Symposium. That's where natural-born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the Grim Forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic de-atomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure. That's easy. Here's what you need. A bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ow! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of a shark, eee! a rotten egg, gross, a picture of Santa Claus, um, random, and a lock of Snow White's hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? Mecca lecka ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong. Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sent Snow White back home. Whoa! And at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh, no, it's still Snow White. What? I got rid of her! It should be me! This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. The evil queen had just discovered that Snow White was back, and she was not happy. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. I had to brush her cat's teeth. And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. I mean, really, who leaves a half a meatloaf under the bed? Gross. Hey there, how's it going? Oh, you scared me. Sorry, I hope the queen's not being too mean. She's a real piece of work. Yeah, you think deep down maybe she's actually nice? Uh, I don't think so. She's pretty bad. I bet she was a really nice kid. And then something terrible happened, like a wizard cast a spell on her that made her bad. Not exactly. Or maybe she was attacked by a two-headed fire-breathing dragon and she just hasn't been the same since. Or, or, or maybe she was tricked by a boy who said he was a charming prince but then he turned out to be a scaly lizard. And ever since then, she's just too sad to be nice. Um, nope, I don't think so. Surely she hasn't always been evil. I'm an all-knowing mirror. Trust me, she's been bad since day one. She drew angry frowny faces on all her sister's dolls. She cut her brother's hair, and not in a good way. She scribbled all over her family photos. She even put mustard in her mom's shampoo bottle. Yes, indeed. She is one bad apple. Well, if she's always been bad, then how come my dad wanted to marry her? 
She tricked him. Before your soon-to-be stepmother moved to town, she paid a little visit to the witches in the grim forest. Welcome to ye old witchcraft and novelty shop. What can I do for ya? I want to be queen. Hmm, I don't have any crowns, but I could sell you this t-shirt that says, I'm the queen, gotta love me. <gasps> That's it! I need to make the king fall in love with me. I need a potion, a love potion. Ooh, good idea. The witch sold her a magic love potion that would make a guy fall totally head over heels in love with her. Whoa, I'm totally head over heels in love with you. Will you marry me? Unfortunately, that was my dad. And that's how she became the queen, and worst of all, my stepmother. Even back then, she didn't like me. Ugh! Seriously, who doesn't like babies? Hey, do you think the spell could be broken? That would take some very serious magic. Even the witches of the Grim Forest have trouble reversing spells. Wait, she's coming! How do you know? How many times do I have to tell you? I'm an all-knowing mirror. I know everything. Did I hear you talking to someone? Yeah, um, I, 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 I talk to myself when I'm cleaning. <laughs> really? What about? Well, I was just talking to myself about the weather. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I, I guess so. Now get back to work. That was close. Yeah, if she catches me talking to you, she'll lose it. <gasps> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh is right, kids. The evil queen was listening at the door. Total fake out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Wake up! What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> Here's the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed! See? I told you it was defective. See ya! She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out! <laughs> okay, this is only extremely very scary. No big deal. I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, and these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? It's that way. Thanks. Then turn around three times at the troll's bridge. <gasps> hey there, my sweet. I'm not your sweet, you troll. Sorry, I don't get out much. Then hop on one foot. Why? Hop on one foot past the Wicked War's warehouse. And so the wishes shop should be? Yoo-hoo, right here. You looking for me? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, just witch's intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So, my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line. Or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> this mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard one. Hey, think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him, and I have a feeling I'm going to need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom! Looks brand new. Awesome! Need anything else? Snake tooth? Lucky pigtail? Lotto tickets? Actually, can you reverse a love spell? No way! I don't mess with love spells anymore. Legal reasons. Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Okay, so to get back, I just have to reverse the directions. Hey, 
Where's the Wicked Wart's warehouse? Or the troll bridge? It's getting dark and I'm lost. Wait, I know. The mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. She tried smacking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Ah! Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and... Who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep, follow me. Okay. The professor led Snow White out of the Grim Forest, past the Wicked Ward's warehouse, the Troll Bridge, the Gargoyles, the Dragon's Path, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. I don't know if I'll be going back into the Grim Forest anytime soon, but <laughs> if I do, I'll look for you. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. And I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, though. It needs batteries. Duh. Oh. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You better say me. It's you, my queen. Hmm, you sound the same as my old mirror, the one I destroyed. All magic mirrors have this voice now. It's factory issue. Don't worry, my queen. That old mirror is history. Did you just wink? Uh, no, just something in my eye. The queen was not happy with Snow White's return. Hi, I'm Snow White, and I'm so cool. Blech, it's time to get rid of her once and for all. Uh-oh. What did you say? I said uh-oh because, um, I haven't told you how awesome you look today, have I? Silly me. You look good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. There you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks. And don't get it wet. He's totally gonna get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. How's it going? Oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. Sorry, let's pause again. Snow White had a little bit of a crush on the Huntsman. What? He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. <laughs> and how to make s'mores. Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry fire-breathing dragon. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you, it's you all. Oh. Anyway, what I mean is he's just cool, <laughs> whatever. So, how's it going? Oh, wait, I already asked you that, didn't I? Yoo-hoo, Huntsman boy, I need to speak to you. Okay, your highness, be right there. No, now! I mean, please. <laughs> you better go, she's been super testy lately. Okay, see you later. See ya. <laughs> Huntsman boy, I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date? With her? Ugh, you have no taste. No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods, you sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something, and then you bring me the money. Why do you want the wizard to turn her into a frog? I don't care if it's a frog or a rock or a bobblehead toy. I just want her gone. I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse. 
for pretty little Snow White. Why? She's so sweet. That's exactly why. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look red. The huntsman was very upset. He went down to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talk to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No, out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard. The wizard? He turns people into frogs. Wait, Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. The queen said, if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I think you should run away from the kingdom. This is my home. I'm the princess. It's not safe for you here. You'll find happiness in the forest. Trust me. Snow White knew the mirror wouldn't lie to her, so she went to her room to pack all her prized possessions. Why won't you fit? <sighs> <sighs> You're probably better off here anyway, Teddy. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Lamb. <laughs> and I'll miss you, dollhouse with a real elevator and a tiny ice cream machine. <gasps> and you, my beautiful dresses. <sighs> I'm going to miss being a princess, but I will be brave. And I will go out into the forest and I will survive. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap girl, that was fierce. And so Snow White set off to find the Huntsmen and begin their journey. She was ready for her new adventure. Snow White and the Huntsmen set off for their journey into the Grim Forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. One, she totally knew he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. Two, he didn't know that she knew that he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. And he was nervous. And three, they were always a little awkward around each other anyway because that's just how it is sometimes. When you kind of like somebody and you hope they like you back. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah, just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. Look, I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. What are we gonna do? I packed some basic survival items. Jerky, trail mix, water, jelly beans, first aid kit, oh, and I packed a teeny tiny teddy bear. <laughs> I couldn't get the big one to fit in my bag. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. Why don't I stay here with you? Are you nuts? If you stay, then the queen will come looking for both of us. Yeah, that would be bad. I'll be all right. The queen's magic mirror told me so. Come visit me sometime? Of course. Here, take my camping toolkit. It's got all kinds of handy stuff, even fingernail clippers. Oh yeah, I guess there's no place for a Manny Petty out here. Whatever, <laughs> I'll be fine. I better go. Don't want to make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess, stranded in the woods with a small teddy bear and a pair of fingernail clippers. Well, I better start setting up camp. As Snow White began to work on her new dwelling, the Huntsman practiced his spiel for the queen. It had to be perfect. Why, yes, your highness. I definitely sold Snow White to the wizard. He said he'd turn her into a frog in no time. Yes, ma'am. I sold her for, oh no. If I sold the princess, then I should have money. I don't have any money. The huntsman checked his pockets for loose change. Nope. He looked in his sock. Nada. He checked his fanny pack where he kept important things like his Phillips head screwdriver and chewing gum. Zip, zilch, zero. Wait, I know, to the koi pond. That's where I toss in my coins and make wishes. I wish I could get a puppy. I wish I could fly. I wish I could grow a mustache. I wish I had a hundred wishes. There must be like a million dollars in there by now. Hey, I never did get that puppy or that mustache. That's it, I'm taking my wishes back. Meanwhile, in Grim Forest, Snow White had just finished setting up her new, um, apartment? Perfect, it's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man. Okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. Who's your friend? 
That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Oh, sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Back at the kingdom, the huntsman had just gathered enough coins and was off to see the queen. Your majesty. Why are you all wet? Uh, it's raining. Uh, in the woods. It was raining in the woods. Anyway, here's your money. You sold Snow White to the wizard? Yup. He said he was definitely going to turn her into a frog. A frog? Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You'll never see Snow White again. Well, you might see her as a frog, but it would be hard to tell it's her. Unless maybe she's wearing little yellow frog pants or something. How cute! Now please leave. Okay, your highness. See you later. Now, Muir, tell me, who is the most awesome and wonderful and dazzling person in all the land? Why, it's you, my queen. Obviously. Who else would it be? Snow White? Please, give me a break. As if. Psst. Okay, that's enough. Don't overdo it. That night, everyone went to bed feeling pretty happy. The huntsman was glad he didn't have to sell Snow White to the bad wizard. The queen felt confident that she was the best thing since sliced bread. And Snow White was excited to start this new chapter in her life with her new cool roommates. I'm gonna need a bigger bed. have you guys been there? Not long. You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty. Cute. You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. They didn't get a chance to introduce themselves. I was pooped. <laughs> Leaving your kingdom and roughing it in the woods is exhausting. <laughs> okay, let's do names. Of course, I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm the one who makes everything around here. Any favorite foods? Yes. I like corn on the cob and white cheddar cheese puffs and snow cones and club sandwiches. Oh, hold the mayo, though. <laughs> Got it. And sloppy. I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, I'm okay. Is that everyone? Don't forget me! I'm Tiny! Hi! <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. So, what do you guys do for fun around here? We work. What? Work's no fun. Unless you get to work in an amusement park. <laughs> That's probably fun. We work in the mines! Oh, diamond mines? No, salt. Oh, and you have fun doing that? Sure, everything's fun when you're with your best pals. What do you do for fun? I dance and sing and go to parties and play with all my animal friends and read and get in snowball fights and fly kites and ride bikes and, well, yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'll totally go to work in the mines with you guys. I'm no freeloader. You're much too big to go into the mines. Well, I'll work here then. I can clean. I used to clean my stepmother's room all the time. We're not very messy. <laughs> right. I'm also pretty good at sewing. I can make you guys matching outfits. That okay. would be amazing. Well, then let me at least make some new curtains. There's a lot of bad feng shui around here. Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. 
Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. Okay, okay, I'll ask. Mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? Is it this guy? No. Is it her? It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. Let's have a party in my honor. And I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the queen? What are you doing that's so important? I, uh, have to wash my hair. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. The queen knew he was telling her a lie, but she didn't know why. She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward... Grim Forest? Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. Dun, dun, dun! What was that? Nothing. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Is someone there? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! The queen watched as Snow White and the huntsman talked and laughed. That rotten huntsman was supposed to get rid of her! He was supposed to take her to the wicked wizard and have her turned into a frog! How hard is that? Well, thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Need anything special for next time? Yes. Snacky asked if you could bring him some marshmallows and graham crackers. We're going to make s'mores. Awesome. Will do. Bye, Snow White. Bye, Chef. And please be careful. If the queen finds out, she'll be very angry and we're done for. Yes, that would be bad, wouldn't it, princess? The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, ever hear a knocking? This is an emergency! I need something! Something evil! Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you my lady! I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door! Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale! They're so pretty and just your size! You deserve a treat! Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on! These are beautiful! I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free! <laughs> free? Why? Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize... I'm stuck! What? No! No! I'm turning to stone! Why? Help! 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 Oh no! Snow White had become a statue from head to toe! She didn't even know what you and I know! That the old woman had really been... The Evil Queen! Goodbye forever, Snow White! <laughs> the Queen went back to her kingdom, happy to be rid of Snow White. She marched straight towards the magic mirror. Question, why did you say I was the most awesome person in all the land when we both know you favor Snow White? But Snow White is gone, my queen. She is now. But since you're such a wise, all-knowing mirror, you must have known she's been in the grim forest all this time. Oh, see, when you said in all the land, I thought you meant around here, like in this kingdom. I didn't know you were counting grim forest. My bad. Well, it doesn't matter. She's gone forever this time, and you better watch your back. Ooh. The evil queen was also quite angry with the huntsman. She put him in jail and threw away the key. Wait, I didn't have dinner yet. Aw, oh, man. Meanwhile, back at Grim Forest, the dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool. I want a statue that looks like me. Snow White, Snow White, come out here. There's a statue. Wait, 
I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. Oh, no. The dwarves were so upset. They didn't know how to reverse a curse, and they didn't know whether Snow White could think or feel in there, or if she truly was made of stone. What if she's scared? What if she gets cold? We have to move her inside. The dwarves tried with all their might, but they couldn't move Snow White. Professor, do you know any ways to reverse a spell? Well, let's see. Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! <laughs> Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? It's cute! Okay, let's reverse this spell. Maybe say some magic words! Alakazam! Abracadabra! Kalamazoo! What's you! It's no use! We don't know magic! We could go to a witch. But the witches live in the scary part of the forest! We'll just have to be brave. Yes! We have to save our friend! The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell, while the rest of the gang stood watch to guard and protect Snow White. Ah! Shoo, go away. What if we can't reverse the spell and Snow White is a statue forever? Don't worry, Tiny, we'll have a happy ending. I just know it! <laughs> professor and Giddy were on their way to find a way to save their friend Snow White, bravely trekking through the grim forest. Ah! 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 Okay, well, at least they were trying to be brave. But hey, at least they were willing to face their fears and help a friend, right? The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop! Hello! Hi! Ding, 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 ding! Ah! I mean, hello! I'm Giddy! Good for you! And I'm the professor! We need to reverse an evil spell! What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone! That worked? Wow! Uh, all right, I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. But you're a professor, so you probably already knew that. Yes, I did. I didn't. I love learning new words. Ah, here we are. Now we just toss it in the cauldron and... While Giddy, Professor, and the Witch mixed up the antidote, or stuff that undoes bad stuff, the evil queen was back at her castle thinking, which is never a good thing. Snow White's turned to stone, but why don't I feel any better? I should be glowing, relaxed, happy. Mirror, do I look happy to you? Uh, you look, yeah. Look at that smile. No, this is no good. How do I know some dingbat isn't gonna stumble along and reverse the spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope, I'm going back to take the statue. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up, guys! It's time to save Snow White! We have the antsy goat! That means stuff that undoes bad stuff! Right, Professor? Something like that, but yes! Guys, we can reverse the spell! Wait! Where's Snow White? Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Guys, she's a statue. She can't answer you. Oh, right! Statues can't talk! I got it! Snow White, blink twice if you can hear us! Gee, great plan. Well, if you had been guarding her, she wouldn't be lost. Me? I wasn't the only one. What about you? Oh, pretty please stop fighting. I don't like it. Giddy's right. We have to work together. It's no use. She's either been stolen. Statue net! Or maybe she came back to life and she left. No, she wouldn't just leave like that. I bet the evil queen took her. Of course. Well, we have to go find her. I love it! Okay, team name. How about the seven cool dudes? Blech. I'll consider that a yes. It was official. The seven cool dudes were on their way to save Snow White. Well, there's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White. Wait, there's Snow White now. I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, Professor, over here. Hey, it's the Huntsman. Why are you in jail? The Queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. I don't know what you're planning to do, but be careful. Uh-oh, we came to help Snow White. Huh? I thought Snow White was with you guys. She's here? Um. Oh, that's just a statue. The Queen put it there to torment me. Actually, we think that's the real Snow White. No! We're not sure, but we think so. But we have a 
potion from a witch that could change your back. Well, what are you standing here talking to me for? Go save Snow White. But the huntsman said that just a wee bit too loudly, and yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, there was the evil queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! Aw, you seem so upset. How sad would you be if I smashed that statue into a thousand pieces? No! no! Watch me! Okay, guys, it's time to fight back. But I'm a lover, not a fighter. Today, we're all fighters. Now let's get that evil queen. The dwarves grabbed the queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! Not until Snow White lives and you're gone forever! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! But luck would have it that the evil queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head. It doesn't work! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody crying about? And why are all these pigeons on me? Shoot, birds, shoot! Snow White, you're alive! Of course I'm alive, why wouldn't I be? But wait, why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The evil queen put me here. No, where is she? Over there! Owie! I'm confused. It's a long story. I'll tell it! I love long stories! I'm all ears, but first, we gotta do two things. Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place! Yeah! No! Sorry, majority rules, evil queen drools. <laughs> Not wrong! Yay! Once the evil queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Wait. No, there was one thing missing. Snow White, my darling daughter. Dad! That's right. Remember back in Chapter 2 when I told you that Snow White's dad was away at the semi-annual royal symposium? You know, the place where kings and queens go to learn royal stuff. Well, he was back. Dad, I missed you. Where's the queen? Long story. Oh, yippee! Let me tell it. I love long stories. Now, how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> Today we're going to start a brand new chapter series, Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> of course, we've read Little Red before, but this time we're going to do a deep dive into the story. Are you ready? Little Red Riding Hood, Chapter 1. Let's go! Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Little Red Riding Hood. Hi! I'll take it from here. My name is Bonnie, but everyone calls me Little Red Riding Hood. I have no idea why. <laughs> Anyway, my life is pretty cool, almost fairy tale like I live in a house in a small village where everyone is super friendly and nothing bad ever happens. Well, one time the market ran out of chocolate chip cookies and that was a really bad day. <laughs> but other than that, everything is thumbs up all the time. <laughs> I'm pretty much friends with everyone I know, but my very best friend of all time is my grandma. <laughs> She's the sweetest, most amazing lady you'll ever meet. We do like everything together. We bake. We travel. We do arts and crafts. We go to the movies. And we just hang out. But whatever we do, it's just great to be together. So anyway, let's get into the story. It all started when I got a call. Hello. Hello, Little Red. It's Grandma. Achoo! Gazootight, are you sick? I think so. My head is achy. My belly hurts. I've got chills and I can't get out of bed. No, that's terrible. I'll be right over with soup and juice and medicine and ice cream. Ice cream is essential when you're sick. Alrighty, I'm all packed up. To Grandmother's house we go. <laughs> I couldn't waste any time, so I decided to take a shortcut through the woods. Even though my mom specifically said to stick to the village roads, and everything was fine. Easy breezy and honky dory, until I started to sneeze. Achoo! 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 Oh no, am I getting sick too? Uh, uh, 
Was that a dog? I'm allergic to dogs. That must be why I'm achoo! sneezing. I better hurry up and get to Grandma's house. So I picked up the pace. Hello. Uh, 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 a talking dog? No, I am a wolf. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon, talking wolf. Wait, a wolf? Too scary. Don't be afraid, I am a nice wolf. Okay. Could there really be such a thing as a nice wolf? I'm not so sure. Uh, uh, Bless you. Thanks. I think I'm a little bit allergic to you. Oh, no. Well, then I'll leave you. But could you spare a crumb of food for a poor old wolf? I'm hungry. Well, this stuff is for my grandma. She's sick. I'm going to her house now. Is that right? Well, I can't let you do that. <laughs> you, you can't? No, I insist. You must pick some flowers first. Oh, pick some flowers? <laughs> yes, it will cheer your grandmother up. Oh, and do you know any jokes? Jokes? Her laughter is the best medicine. You absolutely must tell her some jokes. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'll bring her some flowers and tell her some hilarious jokes. She'll be better in no time. Say, do you know any jokes? Oh, certainly. What do you call a lost wolf? What? A werewolf. <laughs> How about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? Werewolf. Werewolf who? Werewolf I find in the bathroom. <laughs> How about this one? What did the wolf say when someone stepped on his foot? What? Ow! These are pretty great. Thanks. My pleasure. Oh my, what big teeth you have. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Well, goodbye. And with that, the wolf bounded away into the woods. He seemed nice enough, right? Grandma's gonna love these flowers, but I better get going. It's getting late. So I skipped ahead to Grandma's house. And again, everything was just fine until I <gasps> uh, tripped. Uh, Oh, huh? I'm stuck in a trap! But who would set a trap? I've only seen that wolf around here and he seemed perfectly nice. But what I didn't know at the time, kids, was that wolf was not nice at all. In fact, he was... Bad! In fact, I am so bad that people call me a big bad wolf. I'm so bad that I do things like huff and paw and blow your house down. So bad that one time I ate a little boy just because he kept crying wolf. And now I've set a trap for Little Red Riding Hood, all because I want to get to Grandma's house first. Why, you ask? Well, because I'm going to eat her. Don't act surprised. I told you, I am bad. So Little Red Riding Hood is probably stuck in the trap somewhere. And look at me. I'm on my way to Grandma's house. Bon appetit. Hello. Grandma. It's me. Meanwhile, ugh, I'm totally stuck. All right, time to show off my survival skills. Super crucial survival skill number one, yell for help. Help, help, help. Kids, I yelled and yelled, but it didn't seem like anyone was around to hear. What's that saying? If a tree falls in a forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it even make a sound? Well, that's how I felt. Like a sad, lonely tree. Oh, help! Help! Hello? Huh? Hello? I'm over here! Where? Here! Keep talking! I'll follow your voice! Oh, well, I've been stuck here for a while and I was going to my grandma's because I was, I was, but I stopped because there was a wolf because then I said, so I got some flowers and then I picked the flowers, I put them in my bag and I was running and I was running and I was so tired, a little bit hungry too. You know, I feel like I'm kind of sweating. It's a little bit humid today and, oh, hi, I got stuck in this trap. Can you help me? Of course. There you go. Oh. I'm free. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Name's Big Al, licensed lumberjack. I'm Little Red Riding Hood, pleased to make your acquaintance. You may be wondering what I'm doing in the woods this late. Well, I'm on my way to my grandma's house. See, she's sick. Everything was fine until I got distracted by that old wolf. I think I'm allergic to him. 
And then I got stuck in this darn trap. You say you saw a wolf? Yeah, a talking wolf. Crazy, right? Did he have a fancy sounding accent? Yeah, he did actually. How did you know? That wolf is bad news. But he seems so nice. Little Red, if you don't mind, I'd like to walk with you the rest of the way to your grandma's house. You know, that wolf, he might be dangerous. Oh, I'd be most appreciative, Big Al. So Big Al the Lumberjack walked with me, keeping watch for the wolf. But we didn't see him. And I didn't have any sniffles or sneezes at all, so he must have been far away. <gasps> Look, there's my grandma's house. Thanks for the escort, Big Al. <laughs> no problem. See you around. Grandma, it's me. Little Red! <clears throat> Come on in! Wow, she sounds really sick. Good thing I'm here. <laughs> Grandma? Huh? Uh? <gasps> Hello, Little Red. Need a tissue? 